as Jesus keep polishing you, will you shine. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we acknowledge you. We acknowledge your presence in our midst. Our gathering is unto you. And as we look at your word, Lord, we ask that you will show us mercy, such that the speaker and the hearer will be blessed. Lord, we don't want to be filled with high-sounding knowledge. All we seek is that we will see you, that our life will be transformed. In Jesus' name, we pray. As an ambassador for Christ, and ambassadors generally, you don't speak your mind. You speak the mind of the country or the leader that you are representing. With what we have going on in the world, it is very important that we pick our information, our interpretation of events from Scripture. If care is not taken, we will be confused with social media, where all kinds of information flies. But you see, as God's children, we don't need any soothsayer. We don't need any motivational speaker to tell us or explain to us what is going on in the world. We have the Word of God and it is sufficient. It's the only book in the world that tells us the end from the beginning. We have a clear understanding of what God is doing and how everything would end. So this morning, I want to share with us something that every ambassador of Christ should know. The seven seals. And can we please turn to Revelation chapter 6? Because of time, I want to move very quickly. Uh, as we try to understand events in the world. Now, the first thing you notice in verse 1 is an invitation to come and see. The entire book of Revelation was a product of a showing, a revealing. It's not a book that is a product of effort. All that they kept telling John throughout the book is just to come and see. If God did not open heaven for John, there was no way he could have seen the book of Revelation. Everything is so. And so I want to quickly say that we must learn a lesson here. Several of us do not approach the Bible. Several of us do not approach the Bible with humility. We approach the Bible like a book that we can simply read and comprehend. If you really want the Bible to be fruitful in your life, <laughs> you must approach that book with great humility and the need for mercy. Because except God opens your eyes to see it, you can't see anything. You will just be reading it. You can read it for years. You see, try something one day. Put your Bible on the table. Lay on the floor and say, Lord, if you don't help me, I cannot comprehend this book. Show me mercy. I want to see you in your word. You'll be amazed. But you know, often we just approach it like any English book that you can just read and comprehend. So they simply said to John that he needed to only come and see. Your effort only becomes meaningful when there is revelation. 
Now in verse 2, when the first seal was opened by Jesus, you remember in chapter 5, it was only Jesus that was worthy to open the, the seals. Nobody. Peter couldn't open it. Paul couldn't open it. Moses, Jeremiah, nobody. John said, when I saw this, I wept. But thank God for Jesus. He is the only one who can judge. Now, when they opened the first seal, there was a horse, color white, and him that sat had, um, he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth, conquering and to conquer. What John was seeing here, he was seeing it in the spirit realm. So this horse that he saw is not your kind of physical horse. You remember in Second Kings chapter two, the horse, the chariot of horse that came to pick um, Elijah. They are not the kind of horses we ride here. <laughs> but you know, everything we see in the physical realm somehow have representation in the spirit realm. So he saw this horse. But then you will quickly notice something about the one who sat on this horse. He had a bow. Now, if somebody has a bow, you will immediately expect something else. You need something to make a bow effective. That's an arrow. You must have a quiver that contains arrow. But this person only has a bow. Now, that means that the conquering we are going to see on the war stage is not going to be so much by military might. It's going to be deception. You see, if I take a gun that has no bullet and I point it at you and I say, let me have all your money. I've only used deception to collect your money. I really didn't have anything. So he has a bow, but he doesn't have an arrow. And his whole goal was to conquer and to go conquering. Now, when you look at the history of man, Babylon conquered everywhere. You remember the image in Daniel chapter 2. He conquered everywhere. God gave him the king Nebuchadnezzar that kingdom. And then we have uh, the uh, Medes and Persia. Their kingdom also came. And then we have the Greece. And then lastly, we have the Roman Empire that conquered the entire world. But then in the book of Daniel, we are told that the last kingdom, before the kingdom of Christ, is made of um, clay and iron. Now, we have not seen that. But you see, that one is not going to be like every other one that they had to use brute force. To control kingdoms and to conquer. When you look at 1941 to 1945, what Hitler tried to do in Europe, it was also with a force. He was taking European countries one after the other. I'm aware maybe one also is going currently. There has always been an attempt by man to conquer another person. The Europeans came to Africa. I don't know what we were doing, but they conquered us and took us as slaves for years. There has always been that attempt. But the one God is talking about here is going to be on a world scale and is going to be by deception. He is going to have a bow, but he will not have arrow. So it's going to be deception. It's going to be fear. And they are going to control the entire world. You remember recently that CBN tried to launch E-Naira. That project is an European project that they want to have digital money. And this digital money, they are going to program it such that if they don't want you to buy chocolate, if you take that, your whatever it is, instrument, and say you want to buy bread, bread will be available, you can pay. But if you buy chocolate, you won't be able to buy it. So they can basically control not just how much you can spend, but what you can buy and what you cannot buy. This is something they are already looking at implementing in Europe. Now, so they can easily control the world 
by deception. Even your ordinary BVN, if somebody just feels like he doesn't like your face and press one single button, you have no access to any account again through BVN. Now, because money, we still have paper money, you may still ha have money to purchase things. But when money becomes digital, there is nowhere you can run to when somebody decides that you cannot spend money. Now you can still look for paper. At least if they block your account, people can give you some paper to spend. That's why they have to digitalize money. I'm going to tie all this together, so don't worry. Now, in verse 3, a second seal was opened. And you see the invitation again was to come and see. Then power was given to him that sits upon it, that they should kill one another. He also received a great sword, that they should kill one another. Let me read it. Uh, power was given him that sat upon to take peace from art. Gradually, the art will be losing peace. You see that there is hardly any part that is peaceful. It will continue. We will be losing peace gradually. But on this scale, there is going to be massive killings of one another. I know, I know some of you, when you see, when you watch young kids beheading people for ritual, you can't believe it. You can't believe that eight, nine years old, we kill, people, we kill their mates to make money ritual. <laughs> Fast worse than that is far more worse than that. Is coming. If you go to verse 5, it says, When he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, Lo, a black horse. Now, the horses are different because God wants to show us clearly that each judgment is different. They are not mixed. We will be able to figure out where the world is on the judgment of God. Because white is different from red. Red is different from black. So you will be able to distinguish the various judgments of God. So this black horse, he that sat on him, had pair of balances in his hands. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of belly for a penny. And see that thou hot not the oil and the wine. Now, be rest assured that the events that are going on in the world, God is fully in control. At times you may want to think that God has lost control. He said, oh, these people have taken over. These people have taken over. They are everywhere. And you may want to think maybe God, God has lost control. No. God is in full control. In fact, all the judgment you are seeing they originate from heaven, not from the devil. It's a sign that God is in charge. Now, for this third seal, there is going to be inflation that you've never, you can never dream of. Such that you will have to work a whole day to have one meal. That's what that scripture is saying. Meal, food will be determined. There will be scarcity. Unfortunately, prayer cannot stop it. This has been determined and it will happen. Now, so when you don't know the mind of God, you will sit down in your room and say, all, all, these, all these foolish Europeans, look at what they are doing. That's why it's important that we stay with scriptures. Now, in verse 7, the fourth seal was opened, and in verse 8, there was also a pale horse. And then death and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and with the beast of the earth. Power was given. They had authority to kill one quarter of the world. Now, let's assume we are 8 billion. I know we are 7 billion plus, but let's take 8 billion for easy calculation. Now, that is 2 billion people. 
If the entire Africa dies, that's about 40%. So you will need to kill like the entire China and India to be able to meet up this figure. And God says it will happen. Such that people will no longer be able to mourn for one another. You know, it's when one person dies, you can mourn. Two persons die, you can mourn. How do you mourn when a billion has died? Who wants to mourn who? The social dynamics and social life that we have grown to know, my family, my children, my cousins, we all change. It's going to happen. They receive power to kill a thought. They are going to do it through various means. Hunger is there. I hope you see hunger. Hunger is there. Alright? Don't be scared. <laughs> what happened to the fifth seal in verse 9? When they opened the fifth seal, they saw the souls of those who were beheaded. Now, people say, oh, when you die, you, are, you have gone. Your soul, your soul just dies. Because they read the passage that says, the, the, the soul that sinned shall die. In that scripture, God is just referring to soul as a person. You can see clearly, say, they saw the souls of them that were slain. Now, look at their cry. They are crying to God that when will God avenge them? Now, I want you to think. Look at the first seal, the second seal, the third seal, the fourth seal. Now, these souls are saying that, God, when will you avenge? And I'm wondering, after all of this, after a quarter of the world has been killed, after hell has rained terror on earth, you know why? When you are in the presence of God, you see things differently. You don't see things the way everybody sees. If, if it was us here, we would feel like this, this problem is enough, God. This judgment is enough. But they are asking that God finish the job. You have not done anything. We want to see judgment on the earth. And look at it, they were beheaded. But what was God's response? He said, alright, relax. I'm going to do it. But there are still brethren, born again, Christians, disciples of Christ, whatever we may want to call it, that we still need to be beheaded. When you look at it from earthly perspective, you will be like, what is this evil going on? But when you look at it from heavenly perspective, it's a determined cause that must be fulfilled. Now, this is what is happening. Why God will be judging the earth, there will be great persecution against the children of God. These ones didn't die as a result of the famine. They didn't die as a result of the killing. They were killed by men. So, as they were meant, uh, spreading evil on the children of God, the judgment of God was also upon them. And then, verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was great earthquakes. So, finally, you will see that even nature, nature will bring judgment upon men. If you have heard of the tsunami in Japan, it's nothing. Is it Hurricane Katrina now? They are all nothing. Have you had thunder? And you became fearful. Now, there are thunder that we have not yet had. Nature. If you know the speed, when they say things drop from, from sky, from outer space, the distance of a star to the earth is difficult for you to imagine it. They call it light year. 9.6 trillion light years 
It's difficult to comprehend that distance. If something travels at that distance to heat the earth, even ocean will dry. And it will happen. So you begin to see nature fighting against men. And then in verse 15, you discover that it will not matter. I don't want to read because of time, because I still need to tidy it up. It will not matter whether you are rich or poor. Whether you are a professor, you are a doctor, engineer, lawyer, teacher, gate man, slave, houseboy, househead. It will not matter. Everybody will be seeking to save themselves from the wrath of God. Verse 16. And said to the mountains and the rock, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that seated on the throne and from the rod of the lamp. Now, you may be asking a question. Where is the seventh seal? This is only six. Can you please put Revelation chapter 8 verse 1 on the screen? Revelation chapter 8 verse 1. Can you put it on the screen? Did you see the seventh seal? Before God could unveil this seventh seal, in Revelation chapter 7, he had to seal the servant of God. Even God will not allow this seventh seal. <laughs> now, the judgment of God, they are in two phases. Earthly phase and eternal phase. The earthly phase is in fourfold. The seven seals, the seven thunders. Can you give me Revelation chapter 8 verse 2? Revelation 8 2. Trumpet. The seven trumpets. So we have the seven seals, the seven trumpets. You know, we have only looked in summary to just one of the earthly folds. Then there is the seven thunders of the judgment of God. Give me Revelation chapter 10, verse 3. Revelation 10, 3. says, and he cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roared. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. The reason why it has become difficult to be able to comprehend the plan of God for the end time is because of this verse. What those seven thunders said is now hidden. But God will reveal it. Because it's only hidden in the scriptures. It's there. It's hidden. So we have seven seals, seven trumpets, Seven thunders. There's still one more. The seven vial. Give me Revelation chapter 15 verse 7. Revelation 15 7. Now what did he say? And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials. Full of the wrath of God, who liveth forever and ever. Can you believe that everything we read about these seven seals is still nothing? It's just the warming up. You know, when a footballer wants to come on the field, they, they, they jog around the field. You know, so the seven seal is the warming up. And I'm asking myself, God, if this one is just warming up, because when you see the seven trumpets, the seven thunder, and the seven vials. In fact, he said this one is what contains everything in fullness. 
And already with this one, even star is already falling from the sky. The sun is turning black. So never forget, there is two sides of the judgment of God. Eventually, the other side is the eternal lake of fire. So on this side, we have four folds. And on the other side, we have the eternal lake of fire. Why did I go into all this? Number one, you see this book of Revelation is a book that is written directly to the church. Jesus told John, he said, everything you see, write and send to the church. So if we don't pay attention to it, we are intentionally deceiving ourselves or allowing ourselves to be deceived. Secondly, there is a question in that verse 6 that I have yet to read. Revelation 6, 17. There's a question there. Because I know many of you have questions. What is the timeline? When will this be? Will this come before this? Will this come after this? As much as you have questions, God also has a question for you. For the great day of his wrath is come. Who shall be able to stand? Did you see question mark in your Bible? Is there anybody here who wants to answer that question? Is there anybody here who can stand? Who can say, "I will be, I will be able to stand"? God is asking you. <laughs> Six point two million people died, or Jews died, during the Second World War. Fifty million people worldwide, during the Second World War. That's the wrath of a man. A man can take a human being like him and put them in gas chambers. And put them in oven like bread. That's the wrath of a man. It's nothing compared to the wrath of God. But the question is this. Why is the wrath of God coming? So let's now round it up. By looking at Ephesians chapter 5. I will read that. Say one or two things. And then I will invite you to pray. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm going to read from verse 3. It says, But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Verse 5. For this ye know, that no warmonger no unclean person, no covetous man, who is an idolater, had any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Verse 6. And I want you to pay attention to this verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things, cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Are you wondering why God is so angry and he judges the world that way? It's because of these things. Say, so don't let anybody deceive you. All the, you, it shall be well with you. You will go far. You will rise up. You will do this. You will do this. These are serious issues. You will look at it like, look at the things that are on this list. Foolish talking. Foolish talking. He says, for this, the wrath of God is coming on the children of disobedience. How much more bitterness? Somebody has offended you, you've been bitter all these years. How about malice? The Bible says, get rid of all malice. You know, and you know we keep malice in different ways. You can be keeping malice, but you greet one another. Particularly in marriage. Good morning, good morning. That's where the conversation ends. No talking again. They are keeping malice. Malice. Wickedness of the heart. Hatred. Is there anybody you hate? Do you hate the pastor? 
Or does the pastor hate anybody? He says, see, don't be deceived though. Don't think this judgment is coming because of something else. It is because of these things. Fornication. It looks like few minutes pleasure. But look at what is attracting. He is turning the sun to black. So you think it's a small thing. How about you, wicked husband? I told somebody, I said, a Christian man cannot beat his wife. Something must be wrong. How can a man beat his wife? When the Bible says you have the same body. How? The Bible says because of this thing, the wrath of God is coming. That woman may not be able to rise against you, but there is somebody that when you see, you will, say, you will tell the hills, you say, please hide me from the one that sits on the throne. How about you, rebellious wife? Open eye wife that knows how to talk back and abuse. You even pride yourself. Me? Before you say one, I don't give them four. Well done. He said, these are the issues. You travel for meetings, you, go, you engage in adultery, you come back home, everything is normal. On Sunday, you come to church, be deceiving yourself. Do you think you are deceiving anybody? He said, no adulterer has a part in the kingdom of God. The people that will go through this judgment, do you think they will do anything more than this? He said, for this, the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience. The way some of us treat one another, you will wonder whether we really want to go to heaven. Some of you, you are bitter. As I'm speaking, you are bitter towards somebody. And it shows, once we talk to you, we know you hate this person. What, where do you want to carry that to? What can anybody do to you that will be greater than what we did to Jesus? And he still forgave you? Some of you, lying is normal. You don't see any big deal in it. And because many of the messages that we hear today seem to portray a weak God to us, a Father Christmas God. Everything is about you will rise. You will do this, you will eat, you will have food. There's a serious issue here. For this thing, the wrath of God is coming. When will you get rid of lying from your lips? Lustful talk, evil. The way some of you treat your house help. If God treats you like that, you will hate God. People who have lived with you, who have passed through your house, they don't have any good testimony other than testimony of your wickedness. God is asking you a question. Will you be able to stand? By the time my judgment comes, will you be able? You know, we need to remind ourselves this kind of things regularly. We didn't pick it from the moon, no. This is also in the Bible. Oh, you want somebody that will say, Oh, I see somebody here today. Your back account is rising. Okay, let it rise. Huh. But when it rises, don't make, make sure that you are not going to face the wrath of God. Say, so this is the reason why he's wrong. He's a righteous judgment. God is not evil. See, for every sin you commit, the wages is dead. The reason why you can repent is because somebody pay. Somebody must pay. Pay for sin. Jesus paid for it. The cruelty he endured was the cruelty you should go through each time you tell a lie. 
Don't take it for granted. He was in agony. When a man prays and his sweat becomes blood, it's not a small matter. Don't take it for granted. You know, because you can just walk to God and say, Father, I'm sorry. Ah, this fornication. You know, I'm sorry. And then he forgives you. You take it for granted. The Bible says you must not receive the grace of God in vain. He said God is not mock. The foundation of the Lord standeth sure. The Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone that named the name of the Lord depart from what? Depart from iniquity. Today you only need to take a trip to the social media. And you will see so many profiles. Jesus' daughter. Jesus' son. Um, Jesus this. But check what they are posting. Completely far away from anything godly. From anything godly. My dear brothers and sisters. How is your heart before God? <laughs> how is that place that nobody sees? Can you stand? Somebody say, no, no, no. Don't scare people. Don't scare people with uh, God. Preach love. Preach love. Anything that will save you from the lake of fire is love. He said, for I am a consuming fire. Do you think God was joking here? When, when it was raining, and Noah was in the ark, and people were outside, do you think they didn't cry? Do you think they don't want to be saved? Imagine a woman giving her baby sucking, her baby sucking, and rain is swallowing her up. He is not a sentimental God. He's a righteous God. You see, that's why the people in heaven, they say, Lord, when will you avenge us? Complete this work. My brother and sister, if we had the time to go through all the judgment of God, maybe it will help some of you to begin to live your life correctly. Let us pray. There's a song they taught me in secondary school. As you talk to God, I'm going to sing that song. It says, On that judgment day, when that law shall come, many, many people shall be disappointed. Some will be crying, crying. Some will be saying, Oh, had I know, had I know, had I know. On that judgment day, when that law shall come, Many, many people shall be disappointed. Some will be crying, crying. Some will be saying, Oh, had I know, had I know, had I know. What will be your cry on that day? Today is a day of mercy. God has come in His glory. To wash clean. God has come in his glory to sanctify us. Can you present that heart to him today? Say, Lord, I'm sorry. That gossip, that backbiting, I'm sorry. Can you cry to him now and say, Lord, touch that place. Don't let me leave this place with anything in my heart that will attract the wrath of God. On that judgment day, when the Lord shall come, many, many people shall be disappointed. Some will be crying, crying, some will be saying, Oh, what I know, what I know, what I know. God doesn't want you to say, I die, no. That's why He has come to you today. He paid a price for that sin. Get your life right with God now. I'm not going to call anybody. <laughs> Just talk to him. He asks a question. He says, who can stand? Who can stand? Are you able to stand? I know I am not able. But there is grace now. Thanks be to Jesus. He's ready to help you. He's ready. He's here to help you. 
ask him, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. Wash me clean. I may have been careless with life. Lord, have mercy on me, Lord. Cleanse me. Sanctify me, O God. I have seen that it is for this reason your judgment is coming. Prayer cannot stop his judgment. Nothing can stop it, brethren. It will come. I don't know when it is coming for you, but today repent of your sins. Cry to Jesus to save you. Cry to him to have mercy. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. response to the message that just came, the closing hymn will be changed to 589. But I'd like to bring this notice to our attention. Today is UMCATC Day. We are encouraged to give um, cheerfully and generously towards the different projects of the denomination. All the offerings that will be taken today will be sent to UMCATC. Redemption in now.